Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I have a video all about my plant next to me here. This is my Ficus Elastica Burgundy and well I have been spending a lot of time concentrating on my garden the last few weeks and well it's time for me to go in and do maintenance on my house plants here in my indoor terrace garden. A lot of my plants have an infestation of mealybugs and there are thrips and it is driving me up the wall and down the wall. <laughs> so I need to go in and do a fix today. So I'm going to try and get around to as many plants a day as I can, clean them up and give them a fresh start. And I just want to go in and show you this one plant I have here as an example of what happens of a few weeks of being left without close attention when you have the amount of plants like I have here in close proximity to each other, you will have a constant battle with nature indoors. It's inevitable and you can hardly stop it completely. And what do they say? Things like mealybugs and spider mites and thrips and fungus gnats and all of these things will be around in some way or other on different plants. We can't live with them, but they will definitely not let us live without them. <laughs> so, I just want to take you in for a closer look because this plant is badly infested with mealybugs. Around the new shoots, around all the lovely new leaves that are coming out. And this plant for me is fighting to grow as much as possible. Since I've had it, it's just wanted to grow and grow. Now, I have a theory of why my plant is infested with mealybugs in this situation. My plant has been made weak because it's in a position that isn't giving it enough light. Ficus elastica plants like bright indirect to bright direct light to grow the best. I've been in southern Spain and seen large Ficus elastica trees in the burning sun all day long and they're gorgeous. And I have an example of that in my crystal cottage as well which I've done a video on and I will be doing another follow-up video on that plant very soon. Mm, but back to this, the Ficus elastica burgundy, it's not getting enough light, so it's stressed. And the new leaves are coming out and they're staying small. They're coming out in bunches, lots of small leaves. This plant is really trying to grow, but it's not getting the light it needs to sustain fuller uh, lengthening growth and larger leaves like the ones around the edge. So. I'm going to give you a good close-up of the plant so you can see what I'm talking about and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to remedy the situation. So let's get in and have a closer look at these critters all over these leaves. Look at all this white everywhere, the mealy bugs on the fresh young leaves, on the shoots and on the stems at the base of the leaves and all around the newest areas of the plant because actually if I look further down the stems there aren't anything down on the larger leaves it's all where the fresh stems and leaves are emerging where the plant is at its most sensitive and where there is most of the fresh new juice that these little insects like to live off. But as I said, I will be able to easily get this off as they, these insects are on the surface and with a good spraying and wiping down, they should be gone in no time. But I just wanted to show you the reality of it. It's like if I blink and I'm gone, then my plants start suffering very quickly. So now you've seen close up how bad the plant is looking. <laughs> close up. Um, from a distance, it probably looks fine on the camera. 
but this is the reality of it. This plant has been infested like this for a couple of weeks now and I haven't noticed it and it's got out of hand. But the good thing about this is, this plant, because it's got a strong stem and there's space between the leaves and they have a thick waxy layer and they are very solid, I will be able to go in and get rid of all of this actually very easy on this plant. So I'm not worried about that part of it. The only part I'm worried about is that my plant is stressed and not growing the way it should be. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it to my bath and I'm going to get the shower and I'm going to thoroughly shower off this plant hard. I'm going to spray it hard all over with water and get everything that is stuck to these leaves and stems off as much as possible with the shower, with the water first. Then I will look closely at the stems and the leaves and I will get a little cloth and I will rub them off as well. Once I've rubbed them all off, I will shower my plant over again to make sure I really have got everything off the leaves. Now this plant also hasn't been watered for a while and it's in a terracotta pot and that is perfect because I can go in and shower this plant and at the same time the soil is going to get soaked through but that is okay, this plant hasn't been soaked through for a long time so it probably needs a good boost in its roots as well. So, that is going to be fine. I will leave it to soak out the bottom as much as possible until it stops dripping and the water will be able to evaporate out the sides of the terracotta pot so it's not going to be sitting in a waterlogged pot anyway. Another thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to get my neem oil. This is a concentrated neem oil I have here that needs to be shaken to make sure it's mixed well. And I basically put a couple of drops of this into a litre of water and I put dishwashing liquid in there as well, a couple of drops, mix that together in a spray bottle and then I will spray my plant over thoroughly. And I'll do that once it's dried off so that I can get the oil to cover the plant. So if there are any bugs on the plant after thoroughly showering and wiping off this plant twice, then they will be smothered with this neem oil and dishwashing liquid. There really shouldn't be anything left on this plant when I'm finished with this. And then the final thing that I want to do to make my plant happier is I'm going to put it into my Mars Hydro Grow Tent where I have a white spectrum LED grow light and leave it there to regenerate and boost up so that it can keep producing beautiful new leaves on the stems as it really desires to do, as you can see here. That is really going to work. That is going to be able to help the plant to grow its leaves. The dark winter is coming. My plant is struggling, but I don't want to get rid of my plant. So I'm going to put it in my Mars Hydro Grow Tent and I'm going to leave it in there until I see this plant has really flushed out a layer or two of nice healthy leaves and then I'm going to get myself a new kind of lamp that I can have above with a grow light in it to keep this plant happy and any other plants that are around where I put this plant at that point. But until then, it's going to do very well in my Mars Hydro Grow Tent, I know that. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go and wash off my plant, clean it up as I said, and then I'm going to bring it back and I will show you the results of the cleaning after I'm finished. So now I have showered off my plant hard and then softer all over and then I wiped off the leaves with little face pads you know and I used those to wipe off all of the leaves and the stems and then I sprayed off my plant again and I used warm water, never cold water on your plant to shock it, lovely warm water all over and then I let it dry and then I sprayed it over with just the two drops of each of the neem oil and the dishwashing liquid in a litre of water. And now my plant is completely cleared of mealy bugs and it's had a thorough soaking through. And I know the plant needed a thorough soaking through now as well 
because when the water started hitting the soil, it actually stayed on the top for a while before it started penetrating down into the soil. So that means that the soil was bone dry. But now the plant is watered through and happy in its roots. The pot is dry already on the outside and the excess water inside is just going to be able to evaporate out quite quickly so this plant will not be waterlogged. So I've given this plant a really good fresh new makeover and now it's ready to go into my Mars Hydro grow tent under the beautiful white spectrum TS1000 LED grow light to keep it happy white spectrum LED grow light for plants. So I know my plant is going to flush out now and be able to grow bigger leaves on the ends here because as I cleaned it, I noticed my plant has branched out one, two, three, three stems around the main stem on this one and there's one there on that and this one has the main stem and it's starting to grow out a new stem on the side of that one too. So the plant is, yeah, it's wanting to carry on and survive and now it's going to do really well. So I just want to take you in for a closer look so you can see all these leaves and you can see how easy it actually was to get rid of mealy bugs on a plant like this. Now, if you only have one or two plants, you will be able to do this often and keep your plant very beautiful, happy and healthy. But when you have a jungle of plants like I do, well, then it's a much bigger project. And during the making of this video, while I was waiting for this plant to dry, I managed to get two other plants cleaned up at the same time. And when I finish this video, I am going to get around to an awful lot more of my plants behind me here. This was just one example of my jungle to show you what you have to do to get rid of these little pests if they come along. But as I said, if you have a lot of plants, it's very difficult to keep them down and they spread from one plant to the other very easily. So my suggestion would be to space out your plants so that they aren't touching each other if you have the space for it. If you want the look of a orangerie or an indoor garden like I do, well, some plants are going to be close together to get that effect and then it just means there's going to be insect infestations an awful lot. You're not going to be able to keep them at bay forever. And once you've cleaned them, that is not it. That is just a one-time thing. They will be back in force if you leave your plants just for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. <laughs> I know that. So yes, sometimes things get a bit out of hand depending on time. I have my garden where I'm there doing a lot of stuff and I'm really enjoying being outside with my garden plants at the moment and I hope you're enjoying seeing those videos too. And then I have my house plants here at my apartment and when I have time for those and I also have to have time for them. So I am spending this day nurturing all of these beautiful plants as much as I can. So let's go in for that closer look at my lovely, clean, fresh plant. So now let's have a look at the fruits of my labour. Look at these lovely, shining, green, fresh leaves, minus mealy bugs all over them. <laughs> I'm so pleased that I've got in and managed to clean this plant up so that it looks wonderful again. So that was the first phase of me fixing this plant and now the next thing it needs is a lot more light to be able to flush out larger beautiful leaves. But this plant has a real zest for life so this tidy up is really going to help it out. Look at these lovely leaves. There are so many of them and so many stems. This plant has really been going at it as much as it can. And it's just so amazing to see the willingness to survive. Plants start to deteriorate, but they will still try to carry on 
living, growing, and producing new stems and leaves until the energy runs out if a change doesn't come in time to remedy the situation. And now my plant is looking much greener and healthier after just a few minutes tender loving care and I hope that this plant will stay like this now for a while under the lovely bright lights in my grow tent and maybe even next summer grow a lot taller and down here I have a few of my skulls my lovely blue sodalite skull, my quartz crystal, my dragon blood skull, and my butter jade skull. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing this plant closer up. You can see what the magic of a shower and a spraying over can do. So now I know it's safe to put this into my Mars Hydro grow tent. I don't have anything really going on in there at the moment, just a couple of plants. I have space for this to be on the floor in there and I'm going to leave it there for a good few months to give it a boost. And then we will see how these leaves turn out after that. So anyway, basically I need to get on with some more maintenance and pest control on my other plants my lovely big Hoya behind me here, my Hoya pubicalic splash has mealybugs on it and I'm going to take that whole plant to my bathroom right now, give it a good old spray over and do exactly the same as I did with this plant to give it a good fresh start too because I absolutely love this plant and it's doing so well for me growing up its metal frame in the middle of my window here so I want to make sure that it stays happy. So if you have any comments or any suggestions for me and everyone else out there about how to keep the pest control down in your indoor plant collection, then please share those below. Thank you very much for that. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.